<clears throat> Hello, everyone. Welcome back to our virtual Mishnah Berish here. We're holding Mishnah Berish Eli Beis, and we will be learning today Mitzvah Hashem Daf Yud Dalit Amid Beis. We have to complete Daf Yud Dalit Amid Aleph. We are continuing to learn Hilchas Tefila, and specifically the halachas that pertain to uh, Ashrei Lamnutzeach Mubalitziyin and the parts of davening that follow Uvalitziyin and the Kedusha de Sidra. So we pick up today on Yudalad Amin Aleph, Simen Kuf Lamid Beis. We began Sif Beis. We're up to the words of the Hagah, the words of the Ramah on the top line. Hagah says the Ramah, V'oimrim achar siyam ha at the end of davening. Now, when the Ramah refers over here to the end of davening, in our Seder that we've learned over here, what are we up to? Well, we said Ashrei, we said Lam Natsach, we said Uval Etzion. Now says the Ramah, Achar Siyam Atfila, at the end of Davening, which apparently the Ramah is referring to as after Uval Etzion, says the Ramah, V'oimrem Achar Siyam Atfila, Aleinu L'Shabeach. That's when we say the beautiful Tfila of Aleinu, Aleinu L'Shabeach. And says the Ramah Me'umad, we're supposed to say Aleinu while standing. V'yizahir la'amrai bekavana, and says the Ramah that we should take great care to say Aleinu with great kavana. We should say it with concentration and with intent. We should be paying attention to what it is that we're saying. el el lo for those that have the Nusach, we're going to see that there are many different Nusachis brought down for Aleinu, but those that have the Nusach, where it says in Aleinu, Sheheim mishtachavim lahevel varik umispalalim el el lo yoshia. I'm not going to, because of the forum and the venue, I am not going to translate those words right now, but I believe most of you know what those words mean. So those that have the meaning to say that, Sheheim mishtachavim lohevel varik umispalim el el lo yoshia, those who say that, yafsik ma'at kaidim sheyoy mar va'anachdu kairim. The words that follow are va'anachdu and we kairim umishtachavim, we bend the knee and we bow down. Lamelech malchem amlochim. HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Lefnei Melech Malchem Lachem HaKadosh Baruch Hu. So the Ramah says, we have to, if we're going to say the words, Shehei Mishtach Vim Lehev Avarik Mispalam El Elo Yeshia, we need a little bit of a hafsaka. We have to make a little bit of a delay before we say, Va'anach Nu Kairim Umishtach Vim Umoidim, lest that phrase be referring back to the previous phrase. And of course, if that phrase would be referring back to the previous phrase, chas v'chalila, it would be as if we are saying that we are kaifrim, which we certainly don't want to do. So if you're going to say it, you have to pause. Then you say, v'anachdu kaifrim u'mishtach v'mumaydim l'fdei melech malchei amlochim ha'kadosh baruchu. Okay, let's uh, pause over here for a moment, and let's take a look at the Mishtabura. Says the Mishtabura, Ice Cotton Zion, Aleinu. We say the beautiful Tvila of Aleinu. Magen Avram, Kasa Vishem Ha'ari. The Chavetz Chaim brings down the Magen Avram, who writes in the name of the Ari. Sheyamruhu Akar Kol Hashalosh Tvilais, that Aleinu should be recited after all three Tvilas, after Shachris, Mincha, and Mairif. The Chay Noi Hagen Bemedina Isenu. And the uh, Chavetz Chaim says that indeed is our tradition, that's the way we are knowing in our regions. But the Chavetz Chaim does give an exception. He says, With the exception of the large shuls, where they would daven mincha mairif. They would have a mairif right away after mincha. Why did they do different? In that case, they would leave out aleinu after mincha. Ein oimrim aleinu akar gemar tefilas mincha. Then they would leave out the Aleinu after Mincha. Why? The Aleinu Sheyobru Akar Tfilas Mairiv Koy Gama Mincha. Because since you're Davidi Mincha and immediately, without leaving the Shul or doing anything else, right away you're going into Mairiv and you're Davidi Mairiv, one Aleinu after Mairiv 
will cover both Tfilas of Mincha and Mayuv. And he brings this down from the mug in Gibayim, B'Shem Seder Hayyot. Says the Chavetz Chaim further, V'yesh kama nuscha yispa'aleinu. There are many variations of texts that are brought down for Aleinu. Fuhuva be'el Yoraba, the El Yoraba brings down several different texts. Ve'ein l'shano shum nuscha, and the Chavetz Chaim says they should not be changed. Whatever the minig is in your locale, whichever text is the minig to say, that's what you should say. Ki kol nuscha yesh la yisayid, because each one of these different nuschais is rooted in something. They're not just mistakes. They're not just uh, something that somebody made up. They are all rooted in a true and proper nusach, so there's no need to change any of them. Ois kot neches, the Ramah said that oleinu should be said with great kavana, bekavana. V'yesh loimer oleinu be'ema u'biyura. The Chavetz Chaim takes it a step further. The Chavetz Chaim says that oleinu should be recited be'ema u'biyura, with dread and fear, awe. Ki kol tzva ha-shamayim shoimim. Imagine, all the tzva shamayim the malachim, are standing and listening to us say aleinu. Now let's put this in perspective for a moment. What do we say when we say kedusha? We say, nekade sheshimcha ba'olam. We ask the rabbinu shalolam that we, we, human beings, earthly beings, should be zeichet to be mekade shem shamayim in this world, in Olam Azeh, in the Olam Agashmi, nekade sheshimcha ba'olam, kishem shemagdishim ha'isai b'shemei maroi. In the same fashion that the malachim hamayne mala, the malachim, the, the, the spiritual beings in the spiritual realms in heaven, the same way they are mekade shem shamayim, in shamayim, nekade sheshimcha ba'olam, like the Nevi'im have reported to us that the Malachim say Kedusha, so we are desiring that we should be Zaychet to be Mekadishem Shamayim the way the Malachim Hamayne Mala, the way they are Mekadishem Shamayim. Certainly, the Malachim we feel could be Mekadishem Shamayim better, so to speak, than we can, they don't have a Mesach HaMavdil. They don't have a veil of Gashmias that is interrupting between them and the and the Shechina. They have a very clear perspective, a clear, unhindered recognition of the greatness of the Shechina. So they could be Mekadosh Shem Shamayim, Kadosh, Kadosh, Kadosh. We who live over here in the Olam HaGashmi, we have a Mesach HaMavdil of Gashmias. We don't have that Aspaklaya Mi'ira. We don't have the, such, a, such a, a, a clear perception of the Shina. It's much harder for us to be able to say a Kedusha, to be Mekadishem Shamayim. Yet, what do we see over here? When we, in the Olam HaGashmi, say Aleinu, guess what? The Malachim are listening to us say Aleinu. And they're in awe of us saying Aleinu. You know why? It's very simple why. Because the grass is always greener on the other side. What do I mean? We lust after the clear perception of the Shechina that the Malachim have. But by the same token, for the Malachim, there's no challenge. The Malachim, yeah, they're Mekadi Shem Shemayim. They have no challenge. They have no Bechira. You know, the, the Rav Moshe, the Rishiva Zatzal, Rav Moshe, Zechit Sadev Kodesh of Racha, he writes on the, Shema, on the Shemesh V'yoreach. He says, you know, most people think that the Shemesh and the Yoreach, the sun, the moon, the stars, they don't have Bechira. You know, I, I, I have a Luach that I use for, for Zmanim. You know, forget the one on my phone. You know, there's a good old-fashioned print Luach. But if you look at it, you'll see it's from Tavshin Ayintes. Right? This is an old luach. It's from Tav Shenayin Tess. Rabbi Weiss, why don't you buy a new luach? I'll tell you why I don't buy a new luach. You know why I don't buy a new luach? Because the sun is incredibly dependable. So if I know that today is May 15th, all I have to do is look at my luach um, uh, from Tav Shenayin Tess and May 15th, and I see that on May 15th, Shkia was 806 
That's what Shkia was. Shkia Tafshin Ayintes, May 15, was 8.06. Now let's take a look here at my phone. Let's take a look at, uh, at uh-oh, I hope I didn't just shut off. No, okay. Got scared for a minute. I thought I shut off my recording. I didn't. If I take a look at Maizmanim, if I take a look at Maizmanim, what time is Shkia on May 15th? This year, guess what? It's 8.06. You know why? Because the sun is as dependable as they come. It doesn't change. So I'm sorry, with all due respect to the people who print the luach, if you have one luach and what you're interested in is solar times, they don't change. So most people think that pshat is that the sun doesn't have pechira. The sun can't choose not to wake up in the morning. The sun can't sleep in, Right? But Rav Moshe writes, it's not true. Rav Moshe writes that the Shemesh does have Bechira. And Rav Moshe brings a Raya from a Chazal. Rashi brings down in Chumash that the, the Rabbeinu Shalalam, Moshe Rabbeinu, set up the Shemesh and the Oreach as Edim, as witnesses, to bear witness to Klal Yisrael on the bris, on the covenant between Klal Yisrael and the Rabbeinu Shalalam. And it, it says over there that Rashi brings down, let me see if I can just find it really quickly. Rashi brings down. Da, 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 da. Let's go. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. No. Looking for the Pasik Haidoi Sivachem Hayoim as a Shamayim Ves Oretz. Um, oh, here it is. Va'ida bam as a shamayim vesa aretz. It's at the end of Parshas Vayelech. Tvarim lamed aleph chav ches. So I believe it's over here. Yeah. Um, oh, no, it's not the Rashi. It's not the, the Rashi that I was looking for. Maybe it's lamed yotes. Maybe it's in the Tzavim. Mm-hmm. Oh, here it is. So Rashi, end of Nitzavim. The Pasik says, the Rabbani Shalom says, Haidaisi Vachem Ayoim as a Shamayim Vesa Oretz. I'm going to set up the, the Shamayim, the heavens, that's the Shemesh, the Areach, the Esha Oretz, and the earth. I'm going to set them up as witnesses. And Rashi says like this. Rashi brings down, Uma elu shenasu The Shemayim and the Oretz, they don't get schar. They don't get reward. And they don't get punishment. If they do the right thing, they don't get schar. And if they do a chet, they don't get punished. And still lo yishanu es midasam. Still, they never change what they're supposed to do. Atem, you, Klal Yisrael, Shem Zechisem Tikabul Schar. If you do mitzvahs, if you do what you're supposed to do, you get Schar. Vem Chatosem Tikabul Peronius. And if you do an Averechas Vechalila, you get punishment. Alachas Kama Vekama. Certainly, you should make sure not to do Averis. So we have over here a Chazal that's drawing a Kalvachimer between the, the Shemayim and the Oretz and Klal Yisrael. The Shamayim and the Oretz, they don't get schar, they don't get an Einish. We, we get a schar and an Einish. So if the sun never changes what it's supposed to do, if we see that that Shkia in Tashanayim Tess was 806, and Shkia today is 806, because never once did the sun wake up late or go to sleep early, even though he doesn't get schar, so certainly we, we get schar. You get out of bed in the morning, you go to shul, we get schar. Certainly we should get schar. Certainly, we shouldn't do Averis. If we do an Averis, we get patch. The sun doesn't get patch. So, Moshe says, most people think that was Pshat. Most people think that, 
They, well, what do you mean? They don't have Bechira. That would be a cash on that Rashi. If Pshad is that they don't have Bechira, so what's the Kalvachimer? There's no Kalvachimer. The sun never wakes up late because the sun doesn't have Bechira. The sun is forced to do his job right. He doesn't have a choice. He doesn't have free will. He doesn't have the, the ability to choose to sleep in. That's why he never sleeps in. So what's a Kalvachimer? Maybe if the Shemesh had a choice, he would also wake up late one day. Rav Moshe says, no, the sun does have Bechira. If the sun decided that Shkia today should be 4.30, the sun could decide, guess what? I'm going to sleep early today. I'm a little tired. I'm going to bed at 4.30. And guess what? Shkia would be 4.30. The sun does have Bechira. Ah, if the sun has Bechira, how is it that never once in history except when Yehoshua, by Yehoshua, by Moshe, how is it, by Avram Avinu, when, when it was Tzadik Geyser, how come never once in history did the sun change its mind and do something wrong? You know why? Because even though they have Bechira, they have such a clear perception of the Rabbeinu Shalalem that the clear perception that they have of the Rabbeinu Shalalem does not allow them to exercise their Bechira and do the wrong thing. The example that Rav Moshe used to give was, he used to say, this was back in the 80s, he used to say, take a Yid and take him, uh, 70s, I'm sorry. He would say, take a Yid and take him, take anybody, not a Yid, any person. Take him up to the top of the Empire State Building and then all the way down on Fifth Avenue on the ground, make a bonfire and ask the guy if he wants to jump off the Empire State Building into the bonfire. Does he have Bechira? He has Bechira. Technically, if he wanted to, he could choose to jump, but he won't. Why won't he? He won't because he doesn't have Bechira? No, he has Bechira, but he has such a clear perception of what's going to happen to him if he jumps. He knows that if he jumps, there's no way he's going to survive. He's going to die a horrible death. So that clear perception of the consequences of his actions takes away the Bechira. So do the Shemayim and the Oretz. The Shemayim and the Oretz are the same way. They have such a clear perception of the Rabbeinu Shalalim and what it means to defy the Ratzon Abayre that they can't do it. Technically, they have Bechira, but the sun will never do it. That's why the Malachim are jealous of us. The Malachim are jealous of us because for them to say, Kaddish, 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 Hashem Tzvakai, Svalai Chalar, for them it's simple. They have no challenge. But when they look at us in the Olam Agashmi, and they see that we in the Olam Agashmi, it, despite all the tremendous struggles that we have, despite the fact that we are this, this stira, we are this contradiction of a guf that's Gashmi and a neshama that's Rukhni, and we have to live here in the Olam Agashmi, where, where, ev- where the truth is hidden from us on a constant basis, and we have to struggle constantly to work on Amun and Betachen, and we have to struggle constantly to realize that despite the fact that we work hard all day and we get a paycheck, our, our, our sustenance doesn't come from that. Our sustenance comes only from the Bari Olam. So there's so much that we have to struggle against. And yet we get up and we say, The Malachim are jealous of us. And therefore, it says that the Malachim stand in awe of us. And they listen to us. You hear this? The Rabbani Shalom is standing with the Pamalya Shamayla. The Rabbeinu Shalalim is standing with the Pamali Shamali. Unbelievable. If the Chavetz Chaim wouldn't write it, the Chavetz Chaim is not writing it on his own, the Chavetz Chaim is taking it from the Mata Moshe. If, the Chavetz, if, if, if not for the fact that we have a Mata Moshe and a Chavetz Chaim that's saying this, who would say such a thing? There's the Malachim, the Rabbeinu Shalalim, and the Pamali Shamali hear us say Aleinu, they stand, they listen, and they respond, Ashrei ha'am shekachaloi, Ashrei ha'am she'ashem alikov. And people run out of shul by Aleinu. Or they run out of shul before Aleinu. I always use this as an example, what we say in Parshas Ekev, V'haya Ekev Tishmu'ud. 
If you'll listen to the mitzvahs, then you'll get all the schar. Ekev, Rashi says, this is mitzvah she'adam dosh pa'akevav. Mitzvahs that people treat lightly and they step on them with their heels. So I always said that's aleinu. Aleinu is a mitzvah she people are, people are dosh pa'akevav. It's the end of davening. Their, their mind is already on the train or on the bus or, or in breakfast. And they're already edging out the door. And they're saying aleinu half in, half out. They're saying Elena, they're winding up the tefillin, they're already schmoozing with the guy next to them. And yet, Rabbi Sai, take a look at what Elena is. And that's why the Yetzirah attacks Elena. Yetzirah is very good at this. The Yetzirah attacks very valuable things. So the Yetzirah attacks Elena. We have a, 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 an ability to say Elena that the Rabbi Nishalaylam and the Pamal Yishamalya are standing and listening and saying, Ashrei Am Shekachalai, Ashrei Am Shehashem Alikav. Take a minute to look at Aleinu. Aleinu l'shabayach la'adoin ha'koyl. It is upon us, it's incumbent upon us to praise the master of all. Lasseis gedula l'yotzeh b'reishis. To give greatness to the creator of b'reishis. Shaloy ha'sanu k'gayei ha'aratzais. Why are we praising him? Why are we thanking him? Shaloy ha'sanu k'gayei ha'aratzais. For he has not made us like the nations of all the other lands. And he didn't set our lot like all the other, quote-unquote, families of the earth. Right? He didn't set our lot like theirs. Or our portion like all the other multitudes. Then you have this pasuk that some, this verse that some people say, We bend the knee, we bow down, we acknowledge before the King of Kings, Hakadosh Baruch Hu, Shahu that He stretched out the heavens and established the earth. And the seat of his glory, of his Shechina, is in the heavens above. And the divine presence and its power is is in the heights. He is our God. There is no other. Our God is true. There's nothing besides him. There's no source of power. There's no source of might. There's no source of anything that happens. There's nothing besides him. Like it says in his Torah, you will know on this day, and you'll take it to heart, that Hashem is the only God in the heavens above, and on the earth below, ain't oid. Then I'm not going to go through the whole volcano Kavalacha, but this is the Aleinu. And think about it when you say it. Think about it. Think about the difference between us and them. Think about the difference of what we have in our lives and what they're missing. Take a look at the richness and the meaning of our lives and the emptiness of theirs. Think of what you're saying when you say Aleinu. Ice cut and test, the bottom line in the Mishnah Burah of Anachdu Kairim. And of course, says the Chavetz Chaim, it's Sarach Lekraya, you have to bow when you say Va'anachdu Kairim, Shaloyia Nirik Kaifer Chas Shalom. You can't say Va'anachdu Kairim Umushtachavim, we bow the knee and bow down, and then don't bow down. That sounds like you're saying, yeah, not me, I don't bow down. That Chas Shalom would be Kvira. I made a mark over here to take a look at the Arach HaShulchan. You all know how much I enjoy the Arach HaShulchan. The Arach HaShulchan says here about Aleinu, after of Aleinu, and of course this is following Nusach Ashkenaz, I mean Nusach Svar also says Kaddish Tiskabel, but after of Aleinu we say Kaddish Shalom with Tiskabel, because that marks the end of davening. Remember what we said. We said that our davening is comprised out of davening in three different formats. We have Berches Kriyashma, which is Tfila B'meyushiv. 
That's the part of davening that we recite sitting down. And of course, we have the Mitzvah Darais of Kriya Shman, Kabbalah Salmach Shemayim. Then we have Shemayin Esrei, which is Tefillah Bima Umid. That's what we daven standing up. And then we have Nefilah Sapayim, we have Tachnon, which is Tefillah Bina Filah Sapayim. That's Tefillah Behishtach bowing down. Those are the three formats that Moshe Rabbeinu davened in. And that's why we daven in those three formats. Then after Nefilah Sapayim, we have Ashrei, because we're going to say Kedusha. We have Lamanat Seach, because we said Ashrei. Ashrei, we say Pesach is Yadech, Hamas Bielachal Chayrotzen. So we make note in Ashrei and acknowledge that the Rabbani Shalalam grants us all our needs and our sustenance. So we say Lamanat Seach, Mizbal David, Yancha Sheb Yom Tzara. And then we have Kedusha de Sidra. We have a volatzia in the Chazal Womisaki that we should say, so they should be leaving our Torah every day by Amaratzim, by Tamid Chachamim. So we have Kedusha in Loshan HaKadosh and in Targum, which means that we're being Oisik B'Torah and we're being Mekadosh Shemayim. Now it's the end of davening. So now it's the end of davening. We say Kaddish Tiskabel. Because in Kaddish Tiskabel, we say Tiskabel Tzaloisayin Uvu Usayin Tachol Beis Yisrael Kadam Avoyin Devishmaya. Those words mean we're asking Hashem that our tefillahs should be accepted. So we close out the davening with Kaddish Tiskabel. Omnam, nahagnu loy merachakach, hashevach hagodol shaloleinu lishabach. The meaning is that after davening, we should say the great praise of aleinu lishabach, sha'amru hakadmonim, that the kadmonim say, sheyehoshua benun tiknu, that Yeshua ben Nun composed Olenu bekvishas Yerichai. At the time of the great Nisim, of the capture of Yerichai, at that time Yeshua ben Nun was Mesakin Olenu. Veha Arizal, the Ari, his hero Laamrai Akar Kol the Ari warned and cautioned and adjured that we should say it after every Tvila. And says Yerach HaShulchan, Uvikoyl, we should say it out loud, Umumid, standing up, Ubisimcha, and with great simcha. Umishtachveh bavanach du koyrim. Vegam Rabbeinu harama, besimen hakoydim, kasav sheyizor l'amro b'kavona. So here again, you see the greatness of Aleinu. I don't remember, I couldn't find it quickly, where it was brought down, but I remember that it is brought down somewhere, that you say Aleinu at the end of davening because, one second, somebody, maybe the Aruch HaShulchan, one second, somebody uses a Lushen, bear with me for one second. I'm not remembering right now. I'm not remembering right now where I saw this Lushen that we say Aleinu because by saying Aleinu at the end of davening, we are mischazek be'emunah. <laughs> was it the dish of footnotes? No, it wasn't in a dish of footnotes. Uh, was it in the bear hative? Okay, I, I have to remember where I see it. I, I, I did see. Such a lush. Oh, <laughs> okay. It's in the Yarech HaShulchan. It's just not where I thought it was. The Yarech HaShulchan. The Yarech HaShulchan says, Uva Amira Soleinu, with the recitation of Aleinu, Teschaze Ko Emuna Etzleinu. It strengthens our Emuna. Vechi Ein Shum Koyach Mibalodo Yisparach. Because we say, Efes Nulosoi. 
that we, we, we say, we verbalize that there is no power in the world, there's no kayak in the universe other than the Rabbi Nishalalim. And we express our hope that we want to establish a world that recognizes the kingdom of Bari Olam. And it's brought down that why do we say it at the end of all the each tefillah? Because we come to Shul and we're mispalil, and then we go back out into the world. Before we could go back out into the Olam Agashmi, we have to be mischazek be'emuna by saying aleinu. And that's why we don't need necessarily the aleinu after mincha if we dive in mincha ma'ariv. Because we're not going anywhere. We're staying in shul. So we dive in mincha, we dive in ma'ariv, before we leave the Beis HaKnesis, before we leave the Beis HaMedrish, that's again when we need to say aleinu to be mischazek be'emuna. Okay, let's go right there. The bottom line here on Yudal and Aleph in the Ramah says the Ramah. Now that we said Aleinu, Vaimrim Kadish Yosam Achar Aleinu. After Aleinu, we have a Kadish Yosam. Vaafilu ein Yosam bebeis Haknesis. Let's say there is no Yosam in the Beis Haknesis. There's no Chiv. Or forget a Chiv. Even just somebody who's eligible to say Kadish Yosam, somebody who doesn't have parents, so he could say Kadish Yosam. Even if there's no Yosam bebeis Haknesis. Well, no, the Ramah puts it, the Ramah means a chiv. Even if you have no oval who's a chiv to say Kaddish, so even an older person who no longer has a father and a mother, he should say Kaddish Yosem. In other words, a Yosem means somebody who lost a parent at a young age. An 80-year-old, 80, an, 80 uh, 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 an 85-year-old who doesn't have parents is not called a Yosem. The generations move on. So says the Ramah, you need a Kaddish Yosem after Aleinu, but even if you don't have a Yosem to say Kaddish Yosem, somebody who no longer has a father and a mother should say Kaddish Yosem. Then the Ramah says, somebody who, who does have a father or a mother, so he still has a parent living, can still say Kaddish Yosem im ein imai makpidim, if he feels that they wouldn't be makpid, that he's saying Kaddish. Okay, let's take a look here at the Mishtabura. Mishtabura is cut in Yud, which starts on the bottom of Yudal and Amad Aleph. Kaddish Yosem achar aleinu. Why do we need this Kaddish? Says the Chavetz Chaim, Shaharei la'olam tzvichin la'omer Kaddish achar sha'omru psukim. We very often institute a Kaddish whenever we learn Psukim. We say a Kaddish. Brought down, one of the reasons for this is because it's brought down that in every Pusuk in the Torah HaKadosha, the Shem HaMephorosh is somewhere Merumas in every single Pusuk of the Torah HaKadosha. And therefore, when you learn a Pusuk or recite a Pusuk, it is now appropriate to say Yiskadal Yiskada Shmei Rabba, because in some way you have just invoked the Shem Hamafirish. So we, whenever you say Psukim, you're supposed to have a Kaddish. Uba Aleinu Yeshkan Kem Psukim, and in Aleinu we said Psukim. So it's Yichim Kaddish Acharov. So now we need a Kaddish after Aleinu. Elisha Nagu BeKaddish Zel Hanicha LiYosam Shemais Ava VeImai. But traditionally we leave this Kaddish for Yisaimim. Why? Because unfortunately, we shouldn't see it. We we have sometimes young Yesaimim that are Kitanim, minors. Or even adult Yesaimim. And they're not a Barhachi. They're not able to daven for the Amid. A cotton doesn't daven for the Amid. Sometimes you have a Godel who's unable to daven for the Amid. So you have a Yasim who's not able to daven for the Amud to be a Chiv and daven for the Amud as a schus for a parent. Shem hayu chaylum lehispal if they Amud because if they are able to daven for the Amud toiv yoyser me amiras kaddish. This a lot of people don't realize this. You know we all talk about kaddish, kaddish, kaddish. You know davening for the Amud as a, as a Chiv davening for the Amud is more important than kaddish. Davening for the Amud is a bigger schus. Then Kaddish. 
Ukvar Yaduah Mimaisa de Rabbi Akiva, and the Chavetz Chaim says, we already know from the story of Rabbi Akiva, Tayelas Agadlo Sheyesh Lameis, the great benefit that there is to a Nifter, Kishiyesh Lebein Ha'omer Kaddish Ubaruchu, when he has a son that could say Kaddish Ubaruchu in his chus, Ubi Yoyser B'Sai Shana Rishayna, and that benefit for the mace is magnified during the first year after his petira. So since the, the benefit for the nifter is so great by having a child who can either daven for the Yomit or at least say Kaddish in his merit, and sometimes you have a Yosem who's not able to do so, either because he's a cotton or just because he doesn't know how, lakach tiknu v'hinichu Kaddish zeh, so for that purpose, they set aside the Kaddish after Aleinu, She'ein tzarek shum davar yoyser li yisaymim hein k'tanim hein g'daylim, so that the yisaymim could fulfill what they need to fulfill, and they should have at least a Kaddish that they could say in the merit of their parent. U'b'sayf ha'simen ha'etakti b'bir halacha kol din ha'kaddish b'kitzer, u'b'shem maimar kaddishin yikare. Now the Chavetz Chaim just mentions that in this simen, we have a beautiful kuntris from the Chavetz Chaim, which is called Kuntris Mamar Kadishin. If you look at the Bir Alacha all the way at the beginning of the simon, Ba Yavu Ardine, it's on Yud Gimel Amad Beis, Ba Yavai Ardine Kadish Bekitzer. Here we have in a, in a concise format all of the halachas of Kadish. Umelukit Milavushu Magin Avram, Ukinesis Yecheskel Vadar Chachayim, Umagin Gibayim, Ushari Achrainim. Chavis Chaim says he compiled this. From these sources, from the Lavush to Magen Avram, the Knesset Yecheskel, the Rechayim, Magen Gibayim, and some other Achrayim. So here you have the Alachas of Kaddish. Now, what is this story of Rabbi Akiva? I, I was sure that the Dirshu would have a footnote referencing the story. I know the story is brought down in Mesechus Kala Rabasi. Mm, I think it's brought down in some other places as well. I don't remember exactly where. But the concise version of the story is that Rabbi Akiva encountered an individual who was all blackened and um, he was blackened and he was carrying an exceptionally heavy load and he was working and Rabbi Akiva was horrified by what he saw and he asked him, like, what's going on here? Who are you? Who are you working for? Who's your master that's making you work so hard? If you're an Eved, I'll, I'll buy you off the Eved. I'll redeem you from the Eved. I mean, like, what's going on here? And this individual told Rabbi Akiva, no, I'm actually a mace. <laughs> I'm somebody who already passed from this world. And what you're seeing is my Oynish in Olam Ha'emes. Every day I have to go out and I have to chop down wood and the wood that I chop down is used for the fire to burn me in, which is why I'm all blackened. And I have to carry these exceptionally heavy loads. And please don't make me stay there and talk to you because the, the people that are memuna, that are my taskmasters, are going to come after me because I'm wasting time. You know, so Rabbi Kiva was, what did you do in this world to deserve such a punishment? He said I, that he was a gabite stalker. And and he 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 chanfined the the ashirim, you know he 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 um, in the vernacular he kissed up to the to the rich people to the wealthy and he was very hard on the aniim. It might even say that he was hurig aniim. I don't know if it means literally that he killed aniim literally or it means I don't remember for sure. But definitely he was at least very hard on the aniim, and this was his punishment. And Rabbi Kiva said, like, is there any takana for you? Is there any way to save you from this? Is there anything that I could do? So this mace told Rabbi Akiva, if I would have a child that could say Kaddish for me, or could say, you know, say, say Baruch Hu, and then the people will answer, if I'll have a son, will say Baruch Hu Hashem Amavayrach, he instructs the tzibur, to bench the Rabbi Nishalolam, and then the tzibur answers, Baruch Hashem Amavayrach Lolam Voyed, or if I would have a son to say Kaddish, who says Kaddish, and then the Tzibur answers, Amen Yeheshmei Rabba Bavarach Lala Maloma Amaya, that would save me. That would be a Takana. So Rabbi Kiva asked him, listen, do you have a child? So he said, listen, I died and I left over my wife from Uberis. I left over my wife expectant. I don't know if she had a child or not. Um, 
not sure. If, I don't remember if it says. Not sure if he had a zacher, but he does know if he had a child. So Rabbi Kiva asked him what his name is. I believe his name was Akiva. Interestingly enough, he asked him his wife's name. He told him his wife's name. He asked him what town he comes from. He told him what town he comes from. So Rabbi Kiva went and investigated. And Rabbi Akiva goes to the town, and in the town he asked, does anybody know this Akiva? And they cursed him. Does anybody know the wife? They cursed the wife. Um, finally, he tracked down the son. He tracked down the son. The son was not from at all. The son was a friar person who didn't know anything at all. He didn't even have a bris mila. He was a mamish, nothing. Our Rabbi Akiva took him, took him under his wing, gave him a bris mila, taught him taira, and eventually... He brought him up to the point where he davened for the Ahmed and he said a Kaddish. And then this mace came to Rabbi Akiva and thanked him and said, you will massacre me. So here's, here's, that's the story that they're talking about over here. The Chavetz Chaim brings down the mice of Rabbi Akiva. You see the great tayelis there is for a nifter in a child davening for the Ahmed or saying Kaddish. Okay, we're going we're gonna to stop over here. Now, I'm afraid because Chazal say... Um, Chazal say, Chazal say, Chazal say, Emar Ma'at, you should speak little, Va'asei Harbe, and you should do a lot. There have been times during the course of this year that I was Emar Harbe, Va'asei Ma'at. I remember back when we were learning Hilchus Tfilin, I said that I was hoping to say, to say Shiurim independent of the regular schedule on the, the, um, no, I forgot what the Chavetz Chaim calls it. Where we go through the oisios of the aleph base, I said that I would try to do it, and ne- never came to pass. I was never able to do it. I'm hoping that I'll be able to go through the Chavetz Chaim's Bir Alachas over here on the the Kuntras Marmar Kadishan. Maybe I'll make a couple of shiurim on the Sefer Kuntras Marmar Kadishan, and because it's it's practical alachas that people would like to know who has Kedima for the Amid, who has Kedima for Kaddish, uh, 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 an Oval and Shiva, Shloishim, Yard Site, etc., etc. I think it's halachas that the Oila would enjoy. So I'm going to try. I'm going to see if I could get to it. In any event, we're going to stop over here for now. Thank you so much for joining me for Limit Atar. This is Limit Atar. Should we make it against Klai Yisrael? The Rabbanu Shem should say Yeshua's Refuas, Parnasa, Shadukim, to all those in need. We should be Zaycha to see. The BS Goyal Tzedek, Bimherev, Yamenu, Amen. Be well.